Hello there, and welcome to the Construction Revolution Podcast. My name is Eric Yee, and here on the show, we explore the latest trends, technologies, people, and organizations that are revolutionizing or disrupting the construction industry and changing what the industry will look like tomorrow. Today on the show, I speak with Andrew Fahim, who is the Senior Manager of Research and Development at Geotech. Now, Andrew's research includes non-destructive testing, electrochemical corrosion monitoring, multi-scale, multi-physics, numerical modeling, mass transportation, and material characterization and testing. He's also carried out various research projects on the evaluation of supplementary cementing materials and alternative binders, corrosion of reinforcing steel and other concrete degradation mechanisms, including alkali aggregate reactions, sulfate attack, and freeze-thaw damage. Andrew is a member of ACI 222, Corrosion of Metals in Concrete, ACI 228, Non-Destructive Testing of Concrete, and ACI 231, Properties of Concrete at Early Ages, as well as ASTM, CO9, GO1, and FO6. He also leads the ASTM committee to explore a new test method for measuring corrosion rate of uncoated reinforced steel in concrete. Let's hear from Andrew just after this. So I heard a story once uh, that when you were doing field work while in school, Poria, one of the co-founders of Geotech, would call you and ask you, you know, how your work is doing, how your sensors are doing, the sensors that he was using, uh, you were using in the field. Can you share maybe that story about how you learned about Geotech and first started working for them? Yeah, absolutely, Eric. This is actually one of the main reasons why I joined Geotech. Um, so I was out east, um, East Canada in New Brunswick doing my graduate studies under um, one of the most world renowned people in the field of concrete, Michael Thomas. Um, and Mike's idea was at, at that point was to get one of Geotech's devices. We were doing work on corrosion and comparing sort of different devices that are on the market for determining corrosion rate. Um, and one of his ideas was to get um, a device from Geotech basically to compare it to the other um, at that point, they were more established devices that have been in the market for quite a while, and Geotech had been just coming out with um, sort of one-of-a-kind solution for corrosion rate monitoring. This was um, the very first device that you can just put on the you know the concrete cover, and then you can monitor um, mm-hmm. the rate of corrosion um, of the rebar that's embedded within the concrete. Um, so this was quite an interesting project. And so Puria, who's obviously the co-founder of Geotech, was sort of my co-supervisor uh, for this work. And yeah, as you mentioned, Puri would basically call me every week or so, just how are things going? What kind of results are you guys getting? What are you seeing? What's the observations? Was, this was obviously quite surprising to me. I mean, someone who's running a company would still call me every week and just check how things are going for hmm. some you know, young researcher somewhere um, in Eastern Canada, just doing a, a graduate studies project. Um, so this was quite interesting for me. I was like, why is this guy checking that much? Like, why does he care that much? Um, but t- to be honest, yeah, when I finished my graduate studies, I was like, do you want to come and join us? We're doing these cool things um, and we think it will be a good fit. Um, and honestly, just coming here at Geotech, I started realizing that Puri is not like a, a, the special case. He's re- really the norm here. Um, I mean, I see everyone that I've worked with um, throughout my time here is as, as passionate about what we do, as passionate about the problems that we try to solve. So um, really just this passion about research and passion about, you know, finding new things was perhaps the, the primary reason why uh, I joined Geotech and it's been it's been one of the greatest decisions I've ever taken. That's fantastic. It seems like they really do cultivate that kind of culture here in terms of uh, they, they set the bar pretty high for everyone to hit, but everyone is uh, it seems very eager to kind of chase after and, and get to that, that point. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is sort of one of our core values for sure is, is passion about um, all, all of the very, very difficult research problems that we're trying to solve here. So I've been, I've been very lucky to work with people who are as passionate about these problems. You know, I mean, some of these problems will take us months and years and, and maybe several years to to actually solve and still just finding you know this passion for research is something that's always been fascinating to me that's one of the things that i found most interesting after i joined geotech is the 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 drive to kind of 
I know that we always hear revolutionize the industry, but all these technologies that we are working on do seem to be the, the first in a, a long established industry of not having these things. Um, and so I know on this show, one of the main things we do explore is technologies or practices that, that can revolutionize the construction space. And I know one project that you've been heavily involved in, I, I, I believe, is poised to do that, which is Smart Mix. So can you talk about exactly what Smart Mix is and how broad an impact it could have? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the perhaps the, the biggest problem that our industry is having um, currently, in our in our opinion, is um, the ability to you know simulate and model um, what concrete would do in practice. Um, I mean, we're obviously an industry that's contributing um, a lot of CO two emissions. The, the, just the use of cement contributes eight percent of the global greenhouse gas emissions, um, and that's a significant number. And a lot of this is is caused by um, us overdosing um, cement in our mixes. So um, you look at uh, concrete mixtures that are used in the real world. Um, in, in most cases where we want to meet a specific um, you know, target or specified strength of X PSI or X MPA, uh, we're always usually over designing that you know, as, a, as sort of a safety cushion. Um, and a lot of this over design that's happening um, out there in the real world is caused by a lot of the uncertainties that happen. So we are, you know, manufacturing concrete in an outdoor environment. We don't have, you know, very sophisticated plants that are temperature and pressure and humidity mm -hmm. controlled. Um, we're basically mixing raw materials, sending them in a truck, dispatching them somewhere out there in, in a job site. And we're expecting them to meet um, some very strict um, criteria, whether it's in um, how strong the concrete is or what's the compressive strength of the concrete um, or things like how the concrete flows or what's the air content of it, etc. cetera. Um, so we, our, our thought is that with having the ability to simulate um, these systems and being able to tell, okay, for this specific mixture at this specific, at this specific environment, um, this is sort of the, the performance criteria that you're gonna get, we should be able to optimize mixes quite well if we if we know very well how um, this process works or how those raw materials or how this weather condition affects the performance of concrete. We should be able to you know go back and re-optimize the mixture, um, reducing cost or reducing carbon emissions, um, etc. Um, so the idea with smart mix is that we have we have significant amounts of data. We, we for sure we do have the biggest data set that's available on Earth for concrete performance. Um, and this is collected through, you know, a, a lot of it's collected by our sensors from in situ monitoring. A lot of it's collected by um, our partners. Um, it's it's a global data set that it exposes us to a lot of information about how concrete performs in different environments, etc. Um, the idea was, and we started this about two years ago, was to basically build an algorithm um, to predict the performance of the concrete, um, looking into its um, the ambient conditions or looking into its raw materials characteristics. And with this algorithm, we can do a few things. We can see if the weather, for instance, changes tomorrow, how much um, cement reduction can we get? Or if, um, let's say, the humidity changes or if the, the equipment that they are using, uh, that they are using changes. So if they're using blankets, for instance, or if they're curing in a certain specific way, how can we reduce the, the cement consumption that we have or the cement dosing um, that we have within their mixtures? And this is basically the idea of smart mix. We, with this algorithm, we're able to, again, predict concrete performance or knowing some concrete performance and knowing raw materials that are available to us, we can optimize concrete mixtures using the algorithm that's been trained on the largest and the most diverse um, data set in concrete. It's it's pretty uh, amazing that just after a, a few like a few years of working on this, we, we, we can say that we have the, the biggest data set in the world for this. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it's definitely such an amazing project in terms of anticipating and kind of knowing what's actually going on beneath the surface where beforehand, like you said, it was just taking probably extra cement and to try, hopefully hit those strength targets and kind of perhaps hoping for the best where now you can actually have some data to see how things are, are, are going and actually predict what's going to happen. Especially factoring all those ambient conditions, not just what's in the mix. That's incredible, Andrew. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, one, one of the perhaps the biggest challenge when building these things um, is the data itself. I mean, we cannot claim to have, you know, the, the, the best model building capabilities. No one can claim that. It's really about um, the availability of the data. And this is why we have invested heavily in the, the sensor side of things, because 
you know, this is really our vehicle for collecting a lot of this data from which you can build those algorithms or build those analytical capabilities um, that allow you to do that. Yeah, one thing you touched on uh, was the algorithm, which I know is a lot of it is probably uh, utilizes our artificial intelligence, Roxy. So I was wondering what potential roles you see AI playing in the broader construction industry going forward? Okay, that's an interesting question. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll, I'll touch a little bit about the, the data itself. We are, we're, we're an industry that contributes a lot of data. We are generating data every single day, every single minute. As, as we spoke, there's probably, I don't know how many cubic yards were, were um, of concrete were poured around this time, but you know, we're pouring 15 billion meters cube of, of concrete every, um, every single year. And this is a, a, a significant amount of concrete, in fact. Um, and with this amount of data that we are collecting, um, we're able to build these algorithms that have a wide array of characteristics or build those algorithms that have capabilities that can range um, from, as I mentioned, things like predicting the concrete performance all the way to predicting, you know, when some salt is going to penetrate through the concrete and um, make the rebar corrode, for instance. Um, now, the problem with this is we, those algorithms need significant amounts of data to be able to, to do these kinds of things. And no single entity is going to be able to collect this data unless we mm -hmm. sort of all work together and start, you know, mining this data and start exposing this data to those algorithms. So, so the algorithm side of it is actually fairly simple. The, the algorithm side can be done by you know, a, a few mathematicians or someone who has some um, you know, knowledge of data science and machine learning. But the data side of it, collecting you know, clean, reliable data that has real insights, that's really the, the most challenging part. And this is sort of the part that we have been investing heavily on, just looking at how much data can be collected, how can we use this to build algorithms that really provide um, but the other thing that we have sort of learned within while developing these algorithms is the, um, the, the knowledge or the domain expertise from people like actual um, concrete producers and, and general contractors and people who are in the field is perhaps one of the most important things when building these algorithms. You know, we're not just looking at data, we're looking into um, extracting expertise of concrete personnel and concrete practitioners on, okay, this specific mix is not going to be finishable by site personnel uh, when they, when, after they pour it. Um, and this is a very difficult thing because it's, it's very hard for you to be able to mathematically describe what is the act of, okay, this concrete is going to be too sticky when, when we start finishing it. Um, so, so this is why we had one of the biggest things um, that we've learned within developing those algorithms is we got to listen to those people who are actually doing the actual work uh, in the field and not just, you know, the mathematics uh, behind it. Um, perhaps on the algorithm side, um, yeah, so, so a few of the things that we are trying to, to look into right now is how can we, um, with this algorithm, the, the, the primary thing that we want to do is optimize concrete mixtures. How can we... Um, you know, have a very good control on um, how much cement is being used on a per case uh, basis. Uh, but the other thing is within the, the greater scheme of things within construction, um, we can, you know, provide end users or in this specific case, general contractors uh, with a little bit more predictive capabilities um, on, on the concrete. So we can tell them, um, we think that for this specific case, this is the heat rise that's going to come out of the concrete member. Um, this is sort of the equipment that you need to use, or this is how you need to cool it, or this you need to leave the blankets on for this amount of time, um, etc. So I see uh, quite a few um, use cases for it, but really it comes down to just how much data do we have? Um, can we generate more data? Can we validate those models? And is there you know domain knowledge and expertise that can help us when we build these things? That makes a lot of sense. So one last question, Andrew. Looking at the future of the like the broader construction industry, what has you most excited and what areas do you think present the most opportunities for disruption? Yeah, um, I think the, I, I mean, just the ability, and I, I, I know I touched upon this quite a few times already, but just the ability to, to simulate how this is going to do in the field will have huge capabilities. And I think um, once we're able to do that, we're really, we should be able to cut down significantly on on our um, whether it's, it's just the cost of the materials or you know have a more efficient use um, of the raw materials that we have. 
Um, so, so perhaps this is one thing, but the other thing, again, I, it can, I think it connects to it quite well, is just the ability to monitor things in situ. And, and I don't just say this because we develop um, sensors for the concrete industry, but it's really a, of tremendous impact if we're able to you know, monitor everything that's out there, just the impact that we're going to get you know, in terms of how the visibility to all stakeholders, um, for example, that's something that's very important, um, but also the visibility of algorithms. Um, to this data, that's that's something that will help us quite significantly. Um, on the other hand, something that I'm very excited about is just um, the, and we've been seeing this grow quite significantly over the past just couple of years or so, um, is just the the environmental consciousness of um, you know people who are actually producing and using concrete. Um, we're seeing a, a huge rise of of. One thing, for, for instance, that's rising quite significantly is, is environmental product declarations or EPDs. And this is sort of like the, you know, the, the calorie count sticks that you mm. get on every product, but it's very sim or the nutritional impact for every product. Um, it's very similar to that, but it's uh, for concrete and it shows very clearly, um, OK, for, for this specific case um, and, and, and this specific concrete mixture, here's the impact to the environment that we get. Um, just having this ability um, or having this visibility to you know, the purchaser or the end user um, of the concrete is significant because they know now very well um, what sorts of products are they getting and if I get it from this one producer versus another, um, here's the impact that I'm gonna make. Or if I pick one mixture with one set of materials versus another, here's the impact that I'm gonna make. And, and we're seeing quite a rising trend and you know people understanding exactly the impact that they can make um, and you know requesting um, some reductions from producers on um, the, 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 the carbon footprint or the cement consumption uh, for their mixtures. So this is also a rising trend that I'm very, very excited about. Uh, and the other thing is just on the sort of the efficiency of, of the cementitious materials that we use. So um, one example is over the past perhaps 20 or 30 years or so, um, there's been quite a rise in something that they call supplementary cementitious materials mm -hmm. um, and this sort of, you know, alternative binders or alternative cements that people are using or adding as a replacement to their cement. And with that, these are byproducts coming from different industries and how we can reduce um, cement consumption based on that. Um, so I'm, I'm excited about a lot of things. Uh, this is perhaps just a couple of them, actually. It sounds like it's a... Uh there's a lot of change happening in the industry and it's happening very fast so it is a good time to be a part of it and be part of that big change that's happening absolutely well andrew thank you so much for coming on the show today i appreciate your time and yeah thank you again thanks eric i appreciate it